Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Paul F., Wayne R., Jared G., and Paul H. Thank you all for choosing to support the channel. Giga Texas has crossed an important milestone, hitting 1,000 cars produced in a week, and as far as we know, the goal is still 5,000 per week by the end of this year. However, I think the best part of this picture is that somebody wrote, I led. TOSV tweeted out this image saying, the first truck lanes for charging happening in Santanella. Now, one, I do not think this is the first. I believe there are some other of these in other locations, although yes, it's one of the first. And two, this isn't really for the semi. Remember, the semi is going to have its own mega charger. These are regular superchargers. So this is more for Cybertrucks or other Tesla owners who have a trailer. Plenty of future Cybertruck owners have been wanting to see more of these pull through supercharger stations, so this is encouraging. Good news for Tesla owners in Canada, as it looks like by the end of this year, you will finally be able to be billed per kilowatt hour instead of by time. This, according to a letter obtained by DTC, and once again, should go into effect before the end of 2022, However, there are still further consultations to be had to develop permanent technical regulations for per kilowatt hour billing. No detail in terms of pricing structure has been given just yet. Jeff Roberts shared some new images of Giga Texas and I wanted to highlight two things. First, this appears to be a helicopter pad now in the parking lot. But if you look closely in this image, you will see what appeared to be cyber planters. Two videos that were uploaded to YouTube in an attempt to disprove the anti-Tesla videos from Dan O'Dowd have both been taken down. YouTube's reasoning, it doesn't allow content showing a minor participating in dangerous activities or encouraging minors to do dangerous activities. Specifically, we don't allow content showing or encouraging minors in harmful situations that may lead to injury, including dangerous stunts, dares, or pranks. If you didn't get a chance to see these videos, the cars were never going over eight miles an hour, the drivers were ready to take over at any time, and they were effectively just showing that, hey, FSD is not just rolling over children in the street left and right. Look, not everything needs to be a conspiracy thing, but remember, Alphabet does own Waymo, and we all know there are plenty of more dangerous or disturbing videos that could actually harm children than these two that were just showing how FSD really works. With that said, if these two videos became wildly popular, would it encourage other people to potentially do tests that were a bit more dangerous? Maybe, you can't really argue with that. Elon told us the two main goals for this year, one, Starship to orbit, which is crazy in its own right, and FSD wide release. You've probably seen it by now, but 10.69 has rolled out to an initial group of people, dot one, probably end of this week with a wider release, and dot two, in a few weeks, should be good enough to provide to all FSD beta participants. And Elon said, after the wide release of the beta 69.2, the price of FSD will go up to $15,000 in North America on September 5th. Current price will be honored for orders made before September 5th, but delivered later. This wide release should mean that anybody can have access to FSD and no, you will not need a safety score to do so. And no, we don't need to spend any time talking about the value of this price point. It's so subjective. It depends on so many different things. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. All I do know as a Tesla investor, this is a very bullish sign. And just to give you a sense, after over 14,000 votes, this is how the results are looking so far. And remember, there's always the monthly subscription option that right now it's TBD if that's going to go up in price as well. Over the weekend, like probably a lot of you, I watched a lot of the first .69 videos. And initially it seemed to be smoother, more confident and a more comfortable ride overall. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. I think if you're expecting perfection at this point, your expectations may be a little bit skewed. We need to be focusing on the improvement and the rate of that improvement, which by the way is nearly impossible possible to do by just watching these anecdotes in specific cases. Elon said this early version is being extra cautious so waits for a moderately big gap in traffic to cross upcoming releases will do better in heavy traffic. It's important to note that usually with big architectural changes in these FSD iterations, the first one may have some steps backwards as it adjusts to the new architecture. So Elon did say some point releases needed for polish, so 10.69.2 should really shine. So a lot of the videos on Sunday, it was in low traffic or at night as everybody was just excited to have the release. But then today we get this from Chuck and you just have to take a look. Okay, there's a very tiny gap here that you might want to go for, but if you go, you better go. You can't go now. Stop. Wow, could you feel it thinking there? 
it crept out a little bit more, which wasn't a creep for visibility. It was, it was like, ah, I'm gonna go, but then it changed its mind because the situation evolved. Okay, this is great. We've got a red light that's creating a backup here. Uh, I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it. Sometimes in this situation, cars will stop to give you a gap to cross. Let's see what happens here. This truck is waiting. These cars are not. Is the car gonna go? Holy smokes. Okay, what's it gonna do here? Okay, is it gonna stop in the median? Holy smokes. Okay, wow. A lot of traffic coming from the backside. Um, it went in a gap created by a human. I've now got a trailer. I can't see anything where I am, but the repeater camera has a better view of this angle than me. Okay, now this car, obviously he's a truck. He can see, okay, is it gonna go? Okay, wow. So I think it went because the repeater knew it was clear. I couldn't see it. <clears throat> that repeater camera has a great angle with the way they've got the pose going out there. And it proceeded. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how, how good that was. It did not make any bad decisions. And I just wanted to point out, you see this blue line right here and now has basically a creep line giving the driver more confidence of what the car is seeing. Always remember there is much more the car is seeing. Not everything is provided in the visualizations. And it also has this new merge area in the blue. Now, to be fair, Kim Paquette had a left turn that is somewhat similar. However, this one, it did not pull off effectively. Although I think most human drivers, if they were in this situation, would also be confused. Here, the car is trying to make a left turn, but to do so, it has to go right first to get over in this area and then go left. So it just gets confused with these other cars. So there are still plenty of situations yet to be solved. Honestly though, at least, in the United States, this type of intersection feels like a boss level final type of challenge. For me, 10.69 seems to be a very exciting iteration that will only get better with a dot one and dot two. And to have this go to potentially a wide release in a few weeks is a massive deal. I just wanna highlight, this won't just be in San Francisco or a part of Arizona, but across the entire United States and potentially North America not during select hours, but any time of the day. People like Gary Black say all automakers are going to have autonomy around the same time Tesla does, and I completely disagree. Now, of course, you have to define what autonomy really means. In this context, it's a resident of the United States having access to a car that can drive him or her anywhere at any time. No pre-mapped highway limitations, no time of day limitations. Now, I'm not an AI expert by any stretch, but I don't see anyone other than Tesla even close to pulling this off. Not to mention, Tesla is doing all of this with cameras and neural networks. Most other automakers are using these two plus LiDAR, radar, ultrasonics, and HD maps, increasing the overall costs, complexity, and decision-making challenges. Just think of the challenges with HD maps alone. Carpathy has said it's correct to say making and maintaining these maps is hard, especially at the required scale. Why is it difficult? Chief among them are the costs and the time required to create them and to keep them up to date. And looking at this infographic, just to give you a very rough idea of the cost that these other automakers are going to have relying on all of this different technology. We know LiDAR is going to be at least a couple hundred, if not thousands of dollars. GPS systems in the same range, ultrasonic sensors, radar sensors, even if it's $50 a pop, $100 a pop, whatever, over millions, 5 million, 10 million vehicles, that's a ton of money. And further with maps, is there any industry standardization? How is it going to work in untested environments? How will all of these automakers keep up with real-time data? All of that just to set you up for a keynote that Ashok Eliswamy from Tesla recently gave. Full video will be linked below. Just wanna highlight, as you can see on this screen, no radar for Tesla, no LiDAR, no ultrasonics, no HD maps in its FSD beta software. And my biggest takeaway from his keynote was that even if you don't have the money for FSD, some of this technology is making its way into a basic autopilot that's in all Teslas. So all Teslas are getting this advanced safety technology and things like this. Autopilot prevents 40 crashes per day where human drivers mistakenly press the accelerator at 100% instead of the brakes. So here, for example, these people are pressing the axle pedal, thinking that they're pressing the brake pedal, but the car realizes that that they are doing this and are heading towards a collision and 
automatically cuts out the acceleration, presses the brake to prevent the humans from colliding. Um, in the previous case, there was a person, but in this case, this, this driver would have launched the car into a river and the autopilot saved them. And lastly, just to keep things simple for now, if you hear the term occupancy networks from Tesla over the next few weeks, it's basically what you're looking at on the screen. The way Tesla is doing this is with cameras and the neural nets alone. It's taking the data from these eight cameras and basically stitching it together into this 3D space. Then it's essentially determining if the surrounding area is occupied or not. This approach from Tesla will help with vision of occluded objects and this method is memory and compute efficient because it allocates density where it matters the most around the car's direct environment. So for Tesla's occupancy network, just think around the vehicle, what areas are occupied and thus not able to be driven through. I just have to say two things. One, I think it's awesome that Tesla is being so transparent with all of this, having these videos from Andre and now Ashok giving us some detailed explanations of what's going on. And two, the fact that this FSD in its current iteration is consumer level technology. Now sure you can argue it's expensive, whatever, but the fact that we have cars driving themselves on any street really in North America, sometimes 30 minute, one hour drives with no takeovers is truly incredible. And we are at a very exciting time in the progress of this technology. Even if it takes another five years to get to robo taxis, the developments so far are nothing short of incredible. Moving on, we got some comments from Jorg Steinbach, Brandenburg's economic minister. He said, Giga Berlin, that plant is now the largest industrial employer in Brandenburg. He said, as far as I know, the increase in the number of employees at Tesla is still on schedule and Giga Berlin is gaining skilled workers who do not come from Brandenburg alone, but are recruited internationally. And he confirmed that operations at the factory have been running in two shifts since the end of May, and there should be three shifts by the end of the year. This is pretty cool as the Bank Australia has set a date to cease petrol and diesel car loans starting in 2025. Importantly, the bank said, we're deeply aware we need to support people not yet able to afford an EV while the market grows, and they'll continue to offer loans for secondhand fossil fuel vehicles until there's a viable and thriving market for EVs. What's also cool is the bank already provides decreased interest rates for EV loans. It looks like Elon may be in talks with Synchron for a potential Neuralink deal. It's still unclear where Neuralink stands when it comes to FDA approved human trials. Synchron, however, crossed a major milestone last month by implanting its device in a patient in the US for the first time. And we also learned from Elon Neuralink progress update show and tell on October 31st, Halloween. Ford is staring down the barrel of a $1.7 billion verdict with regard to F-250 pickup truck roofs and them not being strong enough. The plaintiffs in the case argue that they had dangerously weak roofs, making the trucks vulnerable to collapsing in a rollover crash. Ford did say, however, it plans to appeal this verdict. Speaking of Ford, Automotive News has seen an internal email and Ford is looking to cut 3,000 jobs globally and 2,000 will be salaried positions and 1,000 will be agency jobs. This will impact employees in the United States, Canada, and India and Ford is redeploying resources and addressing their cost structure, which is uncompetitive versus traditional and new competitors. The cuts are expected to come in both Ford Blue and the Model E divisions. Britain came out and said it wanted a widespread rollout of self-driving vehicles on the road by 2025 and it's looking to invest about $119 million toward this objective. Some vehicles with self-driving features could be allowed on large roads by next year. However, this announcement sets the framework for a much wider rollout, including public transport and delivery vehicles. This legislation would mean the human driver would not be liable for incidents related to driving while the vehicle is in control of the driving. This thread from Elon was pretty funny. Back March 2018, Elon asked a question about tunnels, but then he said, funny how there are often simultaneous reactions saying it's impossible and it was already done 3000 years ago. Then more importantly, Elon said, would be cool to do a much simplified Hyperloop demo tunnel between maybe Austin and San Antonio, saying it's the fastest way to get between one downtown and another with known physics and the standard model is proving quite resilient. 
In a sign of things to come, Canada has reportedly agreed to terms with VW and Mercedes to supply both automotive brands with raw materials for EV battery production. This deal will give the automakers access to raw materials like nickel, cobalt, and lithium. The agreement was reportedly spurred on by the Inflation Reduction Act, so automakers already looking to narrow their supply chains and to start sourcing the raw materials from North America and countries that the United States has free trade agreements with. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.